Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me also make my contributions on this motion before us on the supplementary budget too. And Mr. Speaker, we'll start by first uh, saying that I know this is a very difficult time for the Budget and Appropriations Committee, and I want to congratulate the committee, which is led by the Honorable Ndindi Nyoro, for scaling the stairs and chewing the gum at the same time. Because this is the time that they not only consider this supplementary budget, two budget estimates, but also the main budget estimates, alongside other very important bills like the CARA and the DORA bills. But Mr. Speaker, having said that, I want to say the following. One, that even though we say that because of economic realities, that is why we are cutting the budget, the truth of the matter is that uh, we deliberately as a country for years now been not truthful in our budgeting process. I say so because the IMF conditionalities force the government of Kenya to mislead the public on the projected revenue collection. There is no single time as a country that we have been realistic in our revenue collection, uh, projections. What we do is we use projected ordinary revenue as a balancing figure. So what we do as a country, we project expenditure. After projecting expenditure, then we decide on how much we will get from external borrowing and domestic borrowing. Then the remaining amount we lump as projected revenue. That is dishonest, and I think IMF also stands accused for participating in this dishonesty and agreeing and allowing the country, uh, the nation Kenya, to misreport their budgets. But having said that, as we say that the budget is being cut by 24 billion, and Mr. Speaker, I'm saying this because I know you also sit in the Budget and Appropriations Committee. Yes, we are cutting the budget by 24 billion, but where is the cut? The cut is on development expenditure at 75 billion shillings. And there is an increase in recurrent expenditure of 51 billion shillings. What is the justification for this? When we are cutting development budget, we are simply not growing the economy. And so when we cut budget for this year, we affect the following year. Because the economic growth for the present financial year is supposed to help and influence what is supposed to happen in the economy in the uh, subsequent financial year. So it is not right to always and continuously reduce our development expenditure at the expense of recurrent expenditure. And Mr. Speaker, I also want to say that this House, we are being dishonest. We continue every cycle to complain about misuse of Article 223 of the Constitution. But we do nothing about it. In fact, we help the executive perpetuate this vice. I have proposed a legislation in this House, Mr. Speaker, to streamline and uh, actualize and bring a statute to actualize Article 223 because it is too general. It is a blank check that we give the executive, more particularly Treasury, to misuse. You find that we use Article 223 even to buy land like we did with Ruaraka land. That can never be an emergency. But when, we, when I made this proposal, Mr. Speaker, and it went to the Finance Committee, the Treasury appeared before the Finance Committee. They made a complete about, about turn and somersault. And then now that my bill has been rejected. Mr. Speaker, how on earth would a committee kill a legislation, a bill that is supposed to come to 349 members of parliament to make a determination and a decision on. And then we come here and complain how Article 223 has be, is being misused. It is us who has allowed the executive to misuse this article at will and to actually steal from the people of Kenya and the taxpayers' money. Mr. Speaker, as I wind up, I want to mention that yes, I support allocation of money for flood mitigation and more particularly for reconstruction. The constituency I've represented for 15 years, Mr. Speaker, in this house, and which I continue to live in, and even uh, uh, hope to continue representing in future Super South, we had the worst, worst disaster that we have ever encountered as a constituency. 
in Sindo, and we lost lives. I hope that this Mze who lost the three children and lost his home together with the land, because he could not even construct, even burying the three children on that land was not possible. Mr. Speaker, I had to use my money to acquire or purchase land for this Mze. I hope he will be one of the people who will be given money for reconstruction so that he can build, can get land, because I only bought one acre for him, Mr. Speaker. This is a Mze with a family of ten children. He lost three in a day. He now has seven. He still needs to reconstruct his life. So this money should not be taken to some specific areas. It must be taken and given across the country. Mr. Speaker, we are giving money for fertilizer subsidy, but the same is being stolen. This House made a resounding decision on the Cabinet Secretary. What happened later? A few of us went and sanitized him. Mr. Speaker, these are the things we should not do because the people of Kenya get fatigued with taxation. We, when their taxes are being misused, they get fatigued. They are not happy. When they see us, they see us as criminals who are participating in sanitizing people who are stealing their money. Finally, I have heard and I have listened and I agree and support what the Deputy Speaker said about uh, ensuring that there is prudent use of resources. I support that. But Mr. Speaker, as we call upon Public Accounts Committee to come up and scrutinize these accounts, it should not be lost to this House that we are underfunding the, a very key institution called the Office of the Auditor General. If you look at the financial reports that we receive from the Auditor, Office of the Auditor General, there is a rush in compiling those reports. There is a rush in auditing. We need more resources to this office so that they can do forensic and special audits, which are more detailed. In fact, the few special audits that I have before me, Mr. Speaker, before my committee, are so detailed, are so damning in their findings. But if you look at the financial audits, there is nothing you are expecting public accounts committee to bring damning reports in this house. From where? The Office of the Auditor General is not well resourced to do proper audit. Let us give that office money to do proper audit, come up with special audit, forensic audit, then this committee of mine, Public Accounts Committee, will be able to bring reports that can be used to control and manage corruption in this country. Mr. Speaker, with those many remarks, I support.